good evening. Today we should talk about pathophysiology of immune system. It will consist of two parts, introduction and typical disorders in the immune system. We start with a slide which I hope you are familiar with. The three lines of defense that we have against foreign invaders and the first line is made by various barriers like skin, mucous membranes along with a typical pathological process inflammation which uh, may be there if this invaders pathogens enter through the barriers they together are forming innate immunity or natural immunity which lacks specificity which is just fighting any possible invader um, while adaptive immunity about which we today we should talk also called specific or acquired immune response is highly specific but it is not uh, using only unique methods rather than it tries to put into use same inflammatory mechanisms making them much more powerful much stronger of course adding with uh, other mechanisms which were impossible in inflammatory response in order to uh, make the picture complete talking about innate immune response we should mention also natural killers which participate in both responses but are considered cells of innate response why since their killing mechanism is non-specific the only thing natural killer cell cares about is the fact of uh, having mhc class 1 molecules expressed on our cell cells as we probably remember mhc class 1 molecules should be expressed on all our nucleated cells and platelets and if it is present then it uh, inhibits killing effect made by NK, NK cell while if due to viral infection or tumor transformation such receptor is missing then the killing machine is put into work through perforin and granzymes granzymes uh, natural killers destroy the target cell uh, main functions of immune system and more typically of adaptive immune system usually we consider two sides and most commonly when people talk about immune system they talk about fight against infection but we should consider uh, also its housekeeping rule since immune system is not only working with uh, heavy noise and um, increasing uh, temperature uh, um, crying just in the body that there is fight against infection much commonly immune system silently removes senescent damaged transformed cells so maybe even this role is the leading in terms of evolution and the third role is integrated which is implement implemented through cytokines and antibodies this is the way immune system interacts with the whole body and that's why this system along with nervous and endocrine system is considered to be integrative system of the body here we see distribution of immune system uh, it probably makes sense that the system is distributed all over the body in order to make uh, possible contact with pathogen as soon as possible uh, we differentiate central organs of the immune system usually considering them bone marrow and tumors as central organs while the others are considered as peripheral cells uh, peripheral organs in the immune system this differentiation depends on the fact uh, wh whether an anti antigen uh, dependent maturation takes place or not in tumors and bone marrow we have antigen independent maturation of t-cells some authors suggest that in gut and pleural mucosa we might also have antigen independent development of the lymphocytes while lymph nodes and spleen 
as well as some other lymphoid organs are considered as peripheral organs. Here are the weapons, the molecules and mechanisms and enzymes by help of which the immune system is uh, performing its functions. One of the most important of them and most traditional one when thinking about protective function are immunoglobulins. Uh, put in simple words, IgG is the most powerful antibody that we have that uh, is responsible for the magic bullet, so called by Ehrlich, meaning that our antibodies directly passing all the barriers may go to the tissues, pass through even placenta barrier, etc. <coughs> IgM are heavy, five times heavier than IgG, not only in their molecular weight but also by their functionality but they are the first immunoglobulins producing immune response so it's okay for uh, immunoglobulin A is usually found in secretions that's why it is usually called secretory immunoglobulin A working at the mucous membranes IgEs are important in allergies we will talk about it in more details as well as in our protection against helmets about IgD we have not so many things to say so we'll skip it just human uh, lymphoid system is represented here I will try usually to skip those slides which are full of text because you can read it later on yourself it's important now to compare innate versus adaptive immune response and here it is given in terms of time um, it's important to mention that innate immune response and inflammatory response starts immediately after the microbe entrance. Here we see complement, NK cells, phagocytes, etc. fighting with the bacteria within first hours after the pathogen entrance. While for proper adaptive immune response we require days. Typically it's possible to have proper effect in um, less than a week we will now shortly review the main types of um, immune cells and we'll start with antigen presenting cells typically when we say antigen presenting cell we uh, imagine macrophage or dendritic cell uh, nonetheless B cells as well as some other cells like endothelial cells are also capable of this but of course dendritic cells are the real uh, professionals, maybe with macrophages. Uh, why? First, they are perfectly located at the site of microbe entrance so that they would be the first to interact with the pathogen and the second thing they require for that are appropriate receptors that allow them to capture microbes. And here is important role of like receptors which is a family of uh, receptors by which dendritic cell is able to conclude that given particle to which it interacts is um, foreign and not only foreign but usually they also through different types of receptors he is by the way Ehrlich working in his laboratory more than a century ago <coughs> here is shown the family of these toll-like receptors. Toll-like receptors are numbered like TLR1, 2, 6, etc. This is human myeloid dendritic cell and this is another subtype plasmocytoid dendritic cell. But what is important is by help of different toll-like receptors the dendritic cell not also not only um, is making guess that this is foreign bacteria but also what kind of bacteria it is and what kind of response should be activated uh, afterwards when this dendritic cell would be traveling to lymph node <coughs> to present the antigen um, like in this case most commonly what we discuss usually is lipopolysaccharide of gram negative bacteria is usually captured by TLR4 by the way some of our colleagues think that uh, they are named so because of the toll, uh, but 
his tool in reality is in Rosovil and this tool is not that of a bell but uh, this tool is from Dutch meaning something strange that was about Rosovila so for us now they are important in terms of uh, ability to first recognize that this is a f something foreign maybe not specifically who is this but what is its class so that what kind of response should follow like if it is lipopolysaccharide or gram negative bacteria it means that a dendritic cell would, pre would produce much more interferon and therefore uh, the continuation of response would be directed to TLPR1 <coughs> response and other possibilities are also shown but this is not a slide that I want you to memorize just to have a general idea how it works so in response to these microbes dendritic cells are recruited to the T cell zones of lymphoid organs so they reach the air through lymphatics where they are ideally located to present antigen to T cells and uh, therefore they have also MHC class 2 molecule and uh, necessary other core receptors in order to efficiently present antigen to T helpers and for this discovery of TLR receptors um, I think Majitov along with Chen Wei whose study he, uh, words he initially read I think he deserves not only this Rosenthal uh, award that he was recently given but also a Nobel award but to the moment it is not still there but he's now actively working he's still young and I hope that uh, he will get this prize one day so to remember once more main times of the lymphocytes the lymphocyte we see here interacting with microbe and after many steps here of course are uh, just omitted and we see that B cells functionally uh, kill or destroy microbes by becoming plasma cell and producing antibodies while T helpers do this much more due to production of various cytokines and activating macrophages, neutrophils, inflammation, same B cells, etc. And cytotoxic uh, T cells are performing cell mediated immune response and they do this by specifically recognizing those antigens presenting on the target cells. <coughs> In order to further being able to talk about antigen presentation which is very uh, interesting and very uh, difficult to uh, imagine in terms of time in terms of space process we should talk of course about MHC class 1 and class 2 antigens they are all located on the same fitting chromosome and uh, there are two types of two classes of molecules which we should consider class 1 molecules which already we mentioned are present on all nucleated cells and uh, platelets they all are consisting of these three genes A, B and C which encode for uh, corresponding uh, chains out of which beta 2 microglobulin is just structural component here and it is non-covalently bound to alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3 uh, domains in between of alpha 1 and alpha 2 domains we see here a cleft or groove where uh, the corresponding peptide is shown so it is specific site for that and importantly <coughs> um, MHC class 1 antigens are usually shown to uh, cytotoxic uh, lymphocytes CD8 plus cells since they have ability to recognize this uh, class molecules. Well, if we move to the left, class 2 molecules are included by DP, DQ, and DR uh, molecules, which are both in uh, class 2 and class 1 molecules are extremely uh, variable, polymorphic, and they differ in different people. And in this case, we have uh, again similar structure of the complex, but here we have no beta 2 microglobulin, instead we have more or less symmetric alpha and beta chains in between of which we have again that groove and uh, these molecules, class 2 molecules are expressed only by antigen presenting cell and therefore as you conclude correspondingly 
CD4 cells are able to recognize uh, antigens, peptides, which are shown to them by antigen-presenting cell. Here is this process shown again. Here we have uh, T cell and upper, upper we have antigen-presenting cell. The MHC class 2 molecule with alpha and beta chains contains the peptide antigen being presented and it is recognized uniquely by uh, T-cell receptor, which is different in different T-cells. Uh, each of them are, in this aspect, unique. And uh, this interesting molecule is CD4, which is recognizing that this is really antigen-presenting cell, not anybody else that's showing the antigen. Uh, the others are CD3 proteins, which are markers for being lymphocyte T-cell, and uh, the other epsilon, delta, zeta are supporting uh, proteins here. Interestingly, whole complex here shown is just one signal necessary for antigen presentation. But in order to activate the target T cell, we really require another signal which is made here by help of CD80 or 80. Six with a contact with CD28. It is really important that this cost stimulation also takes place because without this there will be no real activation of target T helper and it will play its important role later on in uh, tolerance mechanism as we'll see later on. And not shown right here but of course present is a uh, third signal for final activation is through production of corresponding activatory cytokines, like interleukin-2, for example, uh, most common. So to finalize who and whom is presenting within these pathways through MHC class 1 or class 2, we should mention that most commonly if the pathogen is intracellular, like if it is a virus, then these uh, intracellular viral particles are broken down and then they are put on the MHC class 1 molecules and then present it at the surface of our nucleated cell and here uh, uh, CD8 plus cells are able to recognize uh, the presented complex and responding corresponding way by let's say killing the affected cell while in second case class 2 MHC pathway starts with endocytosis, phagocytosis of extracellular microbe. It's again broken down. It's peptides, antigens, epitopes, as we sometimes call them, are put at the surface of MHC, MHC class two molecules, and they together are moved to the surface of antigen-presenting cell. Here, CD helpers are meeting with them, and the signal goes ahead. So, extracellular agent, MHC class two, activate CD4 plus helper lymphocyte. Um, here we see where usually this process takes place. Uh, dendritic cells may uh, capture antigen travel through the lymphatic reaching lymph node by upper and lymphatic vessel. Here they come, they meet here with naive T and P cells and it can present antigens to both of them. Here we see how they are organized uh, in space. In green we see B cells and uh, red ones are T cells. <coughs> After this T helper should uh, choose its destiny, where to go. It's very important process because this will decide what kind of pathway immune system will choose to fight against specific type of pathogen. In reality what to become T helper 1, 2 or 17 this question starts even in the heart of dendritic cell, which when is being activated through its TLR receptors, already at that time it has some suggestion. So during uh, contact of antigen presenting cell and T helper, dendritic cell is trying to tell what it feels about this pathogen. But the final solution is of course of T helper. And uh, these cytokines are the directors of the decision. If they will become T helper 1, uh, means if main cytokines being produced here are interferon gamma as well as interleukin 12, then it means that uh, then it means that these pathways, which are theoretically mutually exclusive, uh, 
this pathway will result in much more macrophage activation as well as stimulation of humoral immune response uh, switching antibody production to immunoglobulin G uh, further increasing affinity of the produced antibodies so this pathway favors both humoral response as well as uh, cell mediated response this is uh, a quite broad pathway of immunological response and this is the way we usually choose uh, against intracellular microbes but not only not limited to role in disease is usually participation in autoimmune disorders if this pathway is excessively activated or inappropriately activated TLPR2 was considered uh, probably 10 or more years ago as the main pathway for human response but uh, now it becomes clear that this pathway is not for humoral response in general rather than it is responsible for uh, IgE production and only one uh, pathway of humoral response that is through production of immunoglobulin E which drives us to fight against parasite, uh, helminthic parasites or unfortunately in allergic reactions the key cytokine here is which is very important uh, is interleukin 4 since this uh, interleukin is necessary for development of T helper class 2 which in turn will also produce again the same interleukin as well as interleukin 5 for eosinophils interleukin 13 etc now coming to most interesting T helper 17 we should mention that it is the most recently uh, discovered helper type maybe there are others but um, there is some talk about some others but uh, up to now we can be sure only in these three and uh, this type of helper is active is uh, being formed if the predominant cytokine signaling is by uh, transforming growth factor beta and interleukin cell, uh, 6 it's important to mention that both should be produced in order to make TL per 17 because otherwise if TGF beta is produced in absence of interleukin 6 we will have much more uh, immunosuppressive effect of this cytokine um, further uh, these uh, cells as the name shows are producing much more interleukin 17 as well as chemokines interleukin 22 and all this promotes uh, powerful inflammatory response with uh, involvement of neutrophils with the involvement of phagocytes, uh, uh, macrophages with uh, increasing strength of their response, increasing phagocytosis, etc. And this pathway is successful in extracellular bacteria, fight fungi, etc. On this slide, you can see uh, mechanisms of humoral immunity. Uh, I will only point to some important points uh, specifically the moment when it starts is when uh, one of antigens is choosing its uh, B cell and it is beyond the topic of our today's talk to talk about clonal selection theory but I hope in general you will remember or know that uh, both B and T cells after all uh, they are chosen by antigen as some have said and the one that will react with given antigen it will receive signals for proliferation and uh, here in strengthening this response again helper cells specifically TH1 is involved and then initially we have production of IgM which is less efficient but again very important at the first <coughs> hours of humoral response that participates in neutralization of microbes or their toxins while later we will switch to immunoglobulin G production class switching this is called in some immune deficiency syndromes as is hyperimmunoglobulin M syndrome we have the problem of this class switching and uh, the immune response would become less efficient in this case why because uh, these real immunoglobulins, as we already mentioned, IgGs, are necessary for both opsonization and phagocytosis, for antibody-dependent cytotoxicity, which is implemented by different cells, for instance, natural killer cell, also having FC receptors, may uh, 
understand that the cell on which we see IDGs is a cell which is programmed for destruction, marked for destruction. Later on we see that uh, the immune response is starting to be as much specific as it is possible. The uh, affinity of immunoglobulins is increased during the time, which is probably due to mechanisms of hypermutation, means in the progeny of the in the, within the clone of the proliferated and differentiated cells, there is still stimulation to produce the higher affinity uh, immunoglobulins. And those with the highest affinity would continue the immune response if it is not finished yet. But it is also important that these cells would uh, then become memory cells. So it's important to make sure that the memory cells would have the highest affinity to the given pathogen. And it is important to mention that uh, memory uh, cell formation is probably one of the most crucial differences between adaptive versus innate immune response in which neutrophils never remember when they met. Unfortunately, neutrophils can't remember because they die at the site of inflammation. Here we see comparison also of the primary and secondary immune responses and we see how uh, high affinity IgGs are prevailing after the second exposure to antigen. And here, here we can have the more, uh, like one more to review what we mentioned about humoral immune response and again a couple of slides to remember how the story goes. Here you can see all the uh, toll-like receptors, how they capture pathogen associated molecular patterns like it could be uh, lipopolysaccharide for instance how they, through co-stimulatory molecules, B7 and CD28 co-stimulator, MHC class 2 peptide, it's, uh, and uh, showing finally these two T-cell receptor leading to activation. Why I uh, didn't remove this slide, it is kind of a repetition, but since it is from uh, Chen Wei, the one who, along with the Michita, were responsible for toll-like receptor uh, theory development and uh, important experiments in this field. And it is still for the moment when TLPR17 was not known and it was suggested that only uh, that naive uh, or TLPR0 still has only two ways to choose. And that time it was much easier to explain everything TLPR2 and TLPR1 only. But now it became much more complicated. So we will make a short break here before we will classify these orders of immune system and we'll shortly continue.